Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna break down the collection of must-have mics for metal and rock engineers. So if you're setting up a home studio or a project studio and you're recording heavy music, or if you've already got a studio, but you're constantly buying and selling and swapping out gear, like I used to do, uh, this is gonna help you narrow down which types of mics you need and specific recommendations for rock, metal, and hardcore. Quick side note, I put together a go-to gear guide PDF for you to download to go along with this video. Just click the link in the description here to grab that. So let's jump right into it here. Number one, you need some workhorse dynamic mics and none is more tried and true than the SM57. These things are around hundred bucks new. They take a beating and they last forever. I recommend having at least two of these at your studio. You'll use them for a snare top and snare bottom and also to record guitar amps. They're great for anything that's a little bit loud and aggressive. They can take really high SPLs and they're definitely gonna be a go-to workhorse mic for any heavy music engineer and actually really in any genre. Next, if you're recording drums in your studio, you're gonna need to fill out the rest of the drum kit. So you're gonna need a kick drum mic and my favorite is the AKG D112. By the way, you can also use that, that mic on a bass amp since it captures a lot of that low end and it will take also high SPLs. Obviously it's designed for kick drums. So the AKG D112 is my go-to pick for a kick drum mic. For toms, there are a ton of options and honestly, toms are usually not a focal point in your production. So you don't need to go very high end here. Actually, after trying tons of different mics on toms, I still love the lowly Sennheiser E604s. You can grab two or three of these or a similarly priced pack of tom mics to cover your bases on drums. By the way, I wasted a lot of money on gear over the years, buying and selling high-end stuff, even some vintage mics. And what I'm recommending here are the mics I ended up sticking with after 10 years of swapping stuff out at my own studio, plus a lot of time working in the bigger studios with a big selection of fancy mics. So this isn't just a beginner mic selection video. This is for those of you who have been at this a while too. So let's keep going. Next, I recommend that you have a pair of SDC mics, meaning small diaphragm condenser mics. You're primarily gonna use these on drum overheads. They provide a much brighter, more focused clarity than using large diaphragm condensers on overheads, for heavy music at least. I also love these because they sound amazing on acoustic guitars. Now my favorites are the AKG 451s, but I'd be just as happy with Shure SM81s, or you could try the Rode NT5s as well. All right, so far we've got a couple of SM57s, some kick and tom mics, a pair of small diaphragm condensers, and just with that alone, you've basically covered the essentials for drums and guitars. And for bass, like I said, you could use the D112 on a bass cab, but I actually prefer to just go DI or go direct in with the Sansamp pedal or even just use a Sansamp plugin. So I don't think you need to build out a mic selection for bass amps. The one main thing we've left out so far is pretty important, and that's the vocal mic. Now, my experience, not only the most affordable high quality vocal mic, but also one of the best sounding is the Shure SM7B. Here it is right here. This is the mic you see me using in a lot of other videos doing voiceovers for Pro Tools and mixing videos. This thing is perfect for screamers who wanna be like right up on the mic for recording. They can grab it, they can hold on to it. It's great for people in small or untreated rooms because it's not gonna pick up a lot of the bad room ambience. But I've even used and actually preferred this mic on like quiet female vocalists too and really any type of singer I've tried it on, it's worked incredibly well on. It's a mic that just works and it takes EQ very well in the mix as well without sounding harsh or just nasty. By the way, if you were wondering about a hi-hat mic, the SM7B also does an amazing job there, which is kind of surprising, but try it out. Lastly, this is a bit of a bonus because I don't think you need to add these if you're just starting out but eventually it's good to have one or a pair of large diaphragm condensers. You'll wanna get some proven workhorse models like the AKG C414s or some popular mid-level models from Shure, Rode, or Audio-Technica. These will be used for a variety of purposes. I mostly use my LDCs for drum room mics, group vocals, and some random acoustic instruments like strings and percussion. They can be used in a lot of different scenarios and you might even want to try it out on some vocalists if the SM7 isn't doing it for you. But like I said, this is a bit of a bonus item, at least for those of you who are just starting out. I was never very picky with my LDCs because out of all my mics, they were the ones that sat on the sidelines the most, at least for heavy music. If you're working on other genres, more acoustic stuff, more mellow material, 
more pop maybe, you might use large diaphragm condensers more, but for heavy music when you're doing distorted guitars, heavy bass, loud drums, aggressive vocals, LDCs are honestly, they're just not gonna be your go-to selection for a lot of cases. Now, as you gain experience and start expanding your studio gear, you might wanna add another small diaphragm condenser for miking extra cymbals on a kit. You could also add a more vibey mic, like a ribbon mic to pair on guitar amps or drums or other tracks. But just to recap, here are the go-to mics that you're gonna need in order to cover your basses for heavy music. A couple of SM57s for snares and guitar amps, kick and tom mics like the D112 and E604s, a pair of STCs, small diaphragm condensers to cover overheads and acoustic instruments, and then the trusty SM7B as your go-to vocal mic. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment below if you wanna show some love for some of these mics, or if you've got some other suggestions, feel free to drop it there in the comments. I've also put together a free guide for you to download to go along with this video. Click the link here or in the description to grab my Hardcore Music Studio go-to gear guide. It outlines what I just described in this video, plus my recommendations on preamps, outboard gear, and interfaces for anyone with a studio working on heavy music. And one last thing, if you're not subscribed to this channel already, hit the big red subscribe button here to make sure you see all the new videos I'm gonna be putting out. All right, I'm Jordan, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.